What's happening guys, it's Shane here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over five money mistakes that I personally made in college. Now, some of these will be mistakes that just about everybody makes, and you'll probably learn a lot from this. You may even recognize some of these habits in yourself, but hopefully you can either not do these in the first place, or if you are doing them, you can recognize them in yourself and stop. I'm gonna jump right into it right after you gently boop the like button for the YouTube algorithm. But the first one on the list is going to be a very common one and that is eating out too much. This happens to almost everybody. You go from an environment where you're at home, maybe your parents cook for you, or maybe you know how to cook for yourself, but it's usually pretty simple, like you put stuff in the microwave, and then you go from that to an environment where there's lots of options out there for you to eat, a lot of restaurants on campus, usually there's a lot of restaurants right off of campus as well. Your friends are inviting you to go out to eat all the time. It's also really inconvenient for you to go from a class you know, drive all the way back home or take the bus all the way back home just to make yourself food. So you're gonna end up eating out all the time. This is exactly what happened to me as well during college. And it is crazy when you break down how much it actually costs, how much you're spending on eating out. There was one time that was especially stressful where I started calculating how much I was spending on food and you know coffee and etc. And it was over a thousand dollars a month. Now, if you've been following this channel for a long time, I've made videos showing you that with a thousand dollars a month, you can literally invest that for a few decades and retire. So this is a significant amount of money. And especially when you're young, you have the power of compound interest on your side. Now, I actually love food. I consider myself a foodie. I have friends and we go out and try all kinds of new restaurants, but I'm definitely not going out every single day to the same restaurant again and again and spending money there. There. This is something that you can definitely do in moderation. And I think one of the best investments I ever made was buying a crock pot. Buying a crock pot, you know, you can just put stuff in there. There's lots of recipes out there on the internet. It's extremely inexpensive. You throw stuff in there at the beginning of the day, you come back at the end of the day and it's done. Or you can throw stuff in there, fall asleep, you know, sleep for eight hours, uh, wake up in the morning and you've got an entire meal. In fact, a lot more than an entire meal if you get one of the bigger crock pots. Sometimes it'll last you three to five days. So this is one of the easiest ways for you to save a ridiculous amount of money. If you get a crock pot or you pre-make your meals or you just plan ahead a little bit so that you're not eating out all the time. The second mistake that I made is I didn't start investing early enough. People put off investing because they think that they don't have enough money or a significant amount of money that's going to actually make a difference. But the truth is, even if you just start investing like $20 a month, $50 a month, $100 a month, it's going to make a huge difference, not only directly because of the fact that you have the power of compound interest on your side, but I think indirectly it makes a huge psychological difference. It's almost like getting yourself to go to the gym, right? So if you try to make yourself go to the gym, you see this every single year on January 1st, people are like, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym five times a week. And then they last maybe like two or three days and then they give up. But a much more effective strategy is if you want to develop a habit, you start off with very small steps, right? So instead of going to the gym every day, maybe you do 30 push-ups a day. You do that for about a week or so, and then maybe you start going to the gym once or twice a week. And then it just becomes more and more of a habit, and all of a sudden you find yourself turning into one of those weird CrossFit people who can't stop talking about it. Just kidding, but I think you get my point here. But something that you can do right now is get down on the floor and do some push-ups. And it's the same thing with investing. Even if you have a tiny amount to invest, you need to start investing right away because it's going to build that habit. And even more important than the money itself that you're investing, it's more of like a psychological thing where you're building a habit that's going to help you out tremendously later on in life. Because the truth is, most people don't start investing until they're in their 30s. And that's why I really love a lot of these apps that they have out there these days. You know, you've got like Acorns, for instance, that's an app where, you know, you can set it to where, let's say something costs 50 cents or 75 cents, it'll round that up to a dollar and invest Invest the additional 25 cents. I also have a link uh, to Webull down in the description. I talk about that every once in a while. Webull is a super easy app to use. You also get like four free stocks valued at up to uh, $1,800. I think that's the latest one that they're offering. So investing is incredibly important. I think I did it relatively early, you know, compared to most people, but I could have done it even earlier. You know, opening up a Roth IRA when you're 18 years old is probably one of the best decisions you could ever make. The third big mistake that I made is not getting work experience early enough. Now, I actually did get work experience as a teenager. I worked for a nonprofit. 
um, and I worked in various different positions. But I think specifically what I'm referring to here is doing things during college that don't actually matter, right? So I spent, I can't even tell you how many hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours uh, doing these different positions. For instance, I, I was like, at one point during college, I was the liaison for one organization. I was uh, the chair of like several other organizations. I was the vice president of one organization. I was the president of the class. I had all these different positions. I spent a ridiculous amount of time in those positions. And I can tell you that it didn't impress anybody. It would have been so much better if I just had maybe one or two positions max all throughout that time and I did something really cool in those positions, something that I could talk about, something that I was passionate about versus having all these different positions where I wasn't really accomplishing very much in them. I was kind of just going through the motions. And the reason for that is because I was just dividing my attention in way too many directions. What would have been much better is if I just got work experience. That's what employers actually care about. That's also where you're going to learn the majority of the things that actually matter. And even if you end up having a super crappy job, which most people are going to have at least one crappy job throughout their lifetime, the way you can think about it is it's going to make you appreciate the good jobs that you have in the future even more. So yeah, work experience is super, super important. I think that anybody, honestly, even if you're in high school, you should try to get some work experience. But definitely, if you're in college, get yourself a part-time job. I cannot emphasize enough how important that is. At this point in my life, I've trained so many new hires and the difference is night and day between the people who had work experience versus the people who didn't have any. Even if the work experience they had was completely unrelated to the actual job they're doing, just the fact that they have that work experience, they have that basic level of professionalism, they know how to use a phone, they know how to use a fax machine, Machine. It just makes a huge difference. I know this, uh, recruiters know this, hiring managers know this, bosses know this. It's just a fact. The fourth mistake that I made is something that I see a lot of people making. This is probably the most common thing and that is this thing called lifestyle creep. Now I grew up kind of poor and I learned to basically just live off of a tiny amount of money. I really didn't need very much in order to survive. But as I went to college, I was kind of around a bunch of people from different you know, socioeconomic backgrounds. Some people were really well off, some people were not that well off but I saw other people oh they had a really nice laptop for instance and so I'm like you know what I have this scholarship or I have these student loans maybe I'll get myself a really nice laptop and I saw oh other people have the newest iPhone and so what did I do I went out and I got the newest iPhone and that's what lifestyle creep is all about basically the higher up you get the more money you start making or the more money that you have available to you the more you start spending. And this can get absolutely ridiculous to the point where you're making millions of dollars a year, but you're not actually able to save and invest that money because you're out there buying Lamborghinis and yachts. And lifestyle creep is the reason that 80% of lottery winners end up filing bankruptcy and 70% of professional athletes after they retire also end up filing bankruptcy. Lottery winners are people who won tens of millions, sometimes even hundreds of millions of dollars. Professional athletes usually earn tens of millions of dollars throughout their career, right? So if you don't understand lifestyle creep and you don't get it under control, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you're just gonna end up spending it. In the game of money, it's almost like you have to learn how to play offense, which is making money, but you also wanna learn how to play defense, which is saving and investing your money. And you can do that by budgeting, but that kind of rolls into the last mistake that I wanna talk about, which is I think I focused way too much on the small things and not enough on big things. So when it comes to budgeting, I think this is a really good thing that everybody should do at some point during their lifetime. Basically, you wanna just keep track of every single cent that you spend. And there was a point in my life where I got very serious about budgeting and I truly was tracking like every cent that I spent. But I realized it's not that big of a deal if I buy like a coffee from Starbucks like once a week. This is not something that I need to stress about. It really isn't that big of a deal at all, especially if it's something that I truly enjoy. It's also not that big of a deal for me to go out with my friends a few times a week and get a nice dinner. And this is actually a psychological phenomena where people will freak out about like 20% uh, off 
on a $10 item, right? Like they'll freak out about, oh my gosh, I need to have 20% off on this $10 item so I can save $2. Like people might even not purchase the product if it's not 20% off. So if you have like a 20% off coupon, you bring it to the store, for some reason it doesn't work anymore, you might decide to not buy the product. And you're doing all that just to save $2. But when it comes to buying a car, you think you wanna get it for, you know, 19 or $18,000, but the salesman won't budge and you end up spending 20,000, but they don't think it's that big of a deal if they wanna buy a car for $19,000, but the salesman ends up selling it to them for 20,000. So in one of those cases, you would have saved $1,000 which is a significant amount of money. In the other case, it's only $2, but people don't understand just because of the fact that it's relative. It's not worth it for you to obsess over these small little things here and there, the $2 here and there. Not only from a money perspective, but also from a time and energy perspective. So the way I track my money now is I basically just use automated apps like Personal Capital that keeps track of my money and keeps track of my spending. And if something looks like it's a little bit out of line, I'll kind of cut back on it a little bit. But I'm not tracking every single penny anymore. I used to do that and I think it's a great phase for everyone to go through. But at the end of the day, you probably want to focus more on making money than tracking every penny. If you're spending like five to 10 hours every single week budgeting, imagine if you just worked five to 10 extra hours per week and see how much more money you would make. All right, so that's all I have for you in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, and I will see you next time.